Hello there YouTube world, ladies and gentlemen. Just before I start this video, wait there. When I was piling together my uh, nine best songs, like Faith 1 to 9, on the new Foo Fighters record, uh, I just thought to myself that Make a Fire would always, no matter what, be my least favourite. And then they played it on a radio station, and I love the live version, so I like it now. And uh, it's not my number nine best song on the album. It's number seven, I think, if memory contains me right. Oh. Right, and this uh, video is uh, my top 20 best Foo Fighters songs ever. And I know that it's only been maybe like a week and a half or maybe two weeks since the, uh, the new records came out. And uh, obviously I wouldn't uh, put that into my top 20 uh, yet because I've no, like, just no established yet. I think you need to, like, wait for concerts to come back to truly figure out where it goes in the grand scheme of things. But I'll tell you my top 20 in a minute, actually. But I'll just go through all them, all the albums. Overall... Just for like production, uh, uh, like documentary that I went along with, that's my best Foo Fighters album we've ever made to date so far. Absolutely a uh, classic. The reason I like it is because they like uh, uh, something from Nothing Congregation and I, I Am A River. But overall though, in the top 20, probably it's filled up with most of these songs. Second is... Is it? Now that I've figured out what would be my uh, best albums, second is either that or that. But uh, uh, I, I really, really, really love this album, but I'm just no properly keen on uh, back and forth and uh, a matter of time and miss the, miss the misery. So I'll put that uh, in second place just because of uh, uh, that. And I'll get back to you on I'll get back to you on why that's uh, my my second best Foo Fighters album. It, w it wasn't when I, I was thinking of it a couple of weeks ago though. But that's second. Uh, no, that's third. Oh, that's third best album, definitely 100% now. Aye, I've made up my mind. No pun intended because it's in that song here. Yeah. But uh, just because like nostalgic reasons, and that was the first Foo Fighters album I ever got. I just had to uh, put that number four. And then, just because I love it that much, that's number five. But as I said, none of the songs are established enough to be in the top 20 yet, but uh, they'll, they'll get on honourable mentions, definitely, 100%. That one is uh, number, if I just, one, two, three. Num num fifth best Foo Fighters album. Fifth. And then number six. Oh, no, in fact, number six is that. Because Mayor, eh, Mayor of the Songs of This is in the top 20. So that's why that is going ahead of that. So that is number six, I think. One, two, three, four, five. No, seventh. Seventh. Because it just comes be behind... Uh, medicine at midnight. But recently I've really appreciated that first album more than ever. Right, and then that one. Next. That one. Yeah. Sorry about that monstrosity of uh, my camera funding. Right, so, so far, them. I'll put these in here. Right, next one. That is second least favourite Foo Fighters album. I, I still love it. I mean, compared to like uh, all the other bands in the world, it's an absolute uh, masterpiece. But uh, just in the grand scheme of things, it's definitely not my uh, best. I mean, I, I have appreciated it more now than ever, though. Right, so that goes there. So, and then, in my opinion, that 
I've, I've liked it more now than ever, but it's definitely, uh, I still love it actually, because uh, two of my best favourite songs ever is on it's Sunday Rain and the Line, and I like Run, and I like uh, The Skies the Neighbourhood and La Di Da. But just because there's other albums that uh, just go above it, that's why I've put it there. So that was the albums, and now this is going to be so controversial, it's unreal, but it's just in my opinion, like, if I could only listen to 20 perfect songs for the rest of my life, what would they be? And this is, this is them. <coughs> right. Just got to take a little uh, swig of uh, that, my poison that I'm, I drink when I listen to music. Other liquid-based uh, energy drink products are available. <coughs> right, I'll start from 20 upwards. Right, number 20 spot, Learn to Fly. I just like the impact it and I've heard it on a plane because I put it on the a uh, plane when I went with my football team to Geneva, so that's uh, Learn to Fly number 20 yeah, and number 19, just because I had to include that because it's part of the Foo Fighters On the Men number 18, All My Life very first Foo Fighters song I ever heard back in 2002 don't you know uh, and number 17 Times like these, just because every single time they play a slower version of it, it uh, amplifies the lyrics more and uh, means more than what it is. And number 16, just because, uh, like I'm a traditional Foo Fighters fan, I like the harder stuff. So uh, I put in number 16, White Limo, because it's woke me up a few times. Uh, and then because of the lyrics in the album, number 15 is These Days. Number 14, because I've got that t-shirt on and it's one of the best songs on the whole entire album, I'd put End Over End. Now I know you notice that most of them, they have to bring it as singles, but it's just that what ones have made me a fan of them. Number 13... Alone and Easy Target, when they played that at Red in 2012, it was just absolutely incredible. And then, I've heard this a few times live and it's just incredible. Number 12 is Generator, underrated song in my opinion. Number 11, because like sometimes when I go on my walks and you just like want to get away from the uh, messed up world, and it comes on the impact and you just like, Stand there and appreciate the finer, no, the small things in life. Ain't it the life because of the lyrics? Number ten, just because, like, when I was listening to the album when I was younger, and it always stuck it to me. Overdrive. And then number nine, just because, like, they played a TV special and it was a like concert. And when they play it, it's hard and fast and. I like it, New Way Home, and I like it when it goes slow and then goes fast again. And then number eight, since my sister had a child, and uh, the child's called Lily, in the song Lily, that's when I found Lily the best I've ever had, and I thought, oh, I have to put that in, in it, because it's an omen. And then seven, very controversial, because I bet you no one would have this in the top ten, or even twenty, Sunday Rain. Number six, just because like, when I go walking it comes on, it makes me walk faster or I just lose all inhibitions. Number six is Watershed, one of the greatest songs on that uh, debut album for me anyway. It's just incredible. Number five, just because, well I don't know really, I can't even really explain it. It's just that like I heard the live version and it's just stuck in my mind all the time. I can't even get it out, like the bit just before the chorus when the drum uh, goes like -ru -ru -ru, like that, uh, the line. Number four, because I just love the sheer and utter impact of the guitar and do -do 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 -do. Uh, congregation. Number three, something from nothing because of the lyrics. I was looking, no, I found, no, 
well, you know, looking for a diamond, I found a quarter, which was what I was trying to say there, something from nothing, the first song on Sonic Highways, and then number two, The Feast and the Famine, just because of the lyric content and how fast and hard and direct it is, because it's, it's, it's got like the sort of speed of uh, water, watershed. So that's number two, The Feast and the Famine, and number one, the great, my greatest faith better song of all time is Aurora. Now that is so very, very, very controversial. And yesterday and the day before, I was listening to most of the albums, like the songs that I put in order, like listening to them just to make sure that I, uh, they think they are as good as they are, because some I've not heard in a while. And I did, beforehand, write out like one, wasn't happy with it, write out another one, still wasn't happy with that, because... I just kind of believe it. I had to leave it ever long. I mean, ever long is absolutely incredible, but I prefer the uh, acoustic or slower versions that they've ever done of that song. And the Pretender, I mean, woof. Uh, in my opinion, when they bring out the Pretender, that elevated them to uh, bigger, high, higher status. But just in my opinion, the 20 that I've chosen is better. I mean, I like their, their modern versions where they've changed the, like, in-between parts. Every single one of the Foo Fighters songs, though, on the albums didn't do them justice until you hear them live, because I uh, to truly, truly appreciate a band like the Foo Fighters, you need to hear them live, which I have twice. And, uh I just don't know why I didn't have, like, Everlong, The Pretender, My Hero, or... I was going to put uh, Breakout, because Breakout's absolutely incredible, because I love the music video. But the best music video I've ever done is Let It Fly. That's why I put it in. Oh, right. Special Honourable Mentions. Oh, I've got that. With this, with a CD, a DVD... My friend uh, wants me to get him that for uh, his birthday in uh, May, so I will do. Uh, because he's not a, a massive, massive, massive big fan, but he likes all the fan favourite uh, songs, and I uh, told him what songs are on it, and he said he'd like it, so I'm going to get him that. Anyway, the honourable mentions as as follows. Let it die, just because... Before it even came out, I said to a couple of people that that's going to be a cracker of a song, and I was right. Because uh, when I seen the Foo Fighters in uh, Glasgow, the SECC, uh, that was the first song that they played. A Beam of Light came on, Dave Grohl, and he was singing it. Wait there. Right. I've got Lexa to shut a trap. Right. <coughs> the... Honourable mentions are as follows. My Hero, just because like it's a big fan favourite and I need to do that shout out because every time like they just finish the song and then they go into that one, the sheer impact of the guitar riff at the start, I just have to give that an honourable mention. And the music video is quite good. And also, recently, because like I was... Watching the snooker bit with the volume down, and then I had the album on, and I have to give uh, next year a mention. I mean, I really do not know why they didn't play that more often at live concerts. The same way uh, DOA and Resolve, they are so underrated, it's untrue. The music video for Resolve, if you haven't seen it, or if you have, then you know how good it is, but whoosh. Sometimes, like, Technically speaking, right, and this is only in my opinion, right, uh, that none of the music videos properly, properly do the, uh, the song justice, but uh, it's just because, like, they're comedic, comedic uh, and they take the mickey out of their film, and that's what I love about them. I mean, the Foo Fighters should uh, make their own comedy film, definitely, it would be classic so it would 
So, another honourable mention, even though it will be in my top 20 eventually, but on the new Foo Fighters album, Cloud Spotter, I was so, so seriously thinking about putting that in my top 20. But just because of how new and fresh the album is at the moment, I mean, I could if I really wanted to, but... And soon, as you hear right now, Medicine at Midnight will be in it. Right, put you back down here again. So, I can't remember exactly when I got that t-shirt, but it's got that bell on the back yet. And, uh, the In Your Honour double album I got on the day of release. It was incredible. I, I wore it out. Well, not literally, but uh, I did play it a few times on my uh, CD Walkman because I was on holiday in Buttons at the time and we went to the town and I got it. Incredible. Can't really remember actually getting it, but I do remember it being advertised on the television and then the next second day we went and got it. So, even though, right, technically speaking, to, like, the, the, uh, Foo Fighter purist bands, I know that maybe, like, that, uh, the top 20 list that I just took you through previously has got to be co controversial. In my opinion, that's the 20 Foo Fighter songs that, like, have made me glad and grateful and privileged to listen to Dave Grohl's music and whatnot. But, to truly appreciate a band like the Foo Fighters, you need to hear them live, because the albums are just a snippet of how good they are. And, uh, I love uh, everything that Dave Grohl's ever done, side projects and stuff like that, and producing for other people and stuff like that, and I know that, like, the new album as well would, uh, like, divide people, but I love it. It, uh, it'll become one of my best albums of all time, eventually. It is, in the grand scheme of things, because, like, like, for instance, right, like, say, like, the worst ever selling Foo Fighters album and single has still got to be better than... I still got to be better than, like, say, ABBA, Steps, Westlife, Boys on Five, Take That, all their best selling stuff. Aye. Because Dave Grohl has got more talent in that whole pinky than all the bands I've just mentioned put together. Because, in my, in my opinion, even the next Foo Fighters album we could make, and it would be like uh, the slowest, like, classical music, and it'd still be great. So it still have Dave Grohl's personality in it. And this is just in my opinion, but because of Medicine at Midnight, I would like Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters, like the next album when you put it on, you'd go, good God, that is so funky and smooth. I would want it to be like a cross between David Bowie, Barry White, and... All the funk bands in the, uh, aye, the 70s. But because of Medicine at Midnight and Shame Shame, they are the two songs and the two reasons why I've started listening to David Billy again and putting on the sweatshirt. So, thank you very much. It really does mean a lot to me that uh, you've watched. So... Thank you for listening to my top 20 all-time greatest Foo Fighter songs and the albums. That guy is the main reason I like rock music. So, thank you very much. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, say what your top 10 or 20 Dave Grohl songs are. Foo Fighters. But Dave Grohl might be controversial that I've put one song in it that uh, Taylor Hawkins sung on, but I just absolutely love the funkiness of that song, and it's one of my best favourite songs of all time. So, 
leave a comment of what your best song is on my list and a, com a comment of your top 10 or 20 because Foo Fighters are just far too good for a 10. I uh, was going to do 10 but then I thought nah, they're too good to only have 10. Right, so I'll see you in the next video. Tati bye. Pounded, pounded noggin. See ya.